Okay, Yara Fanatics, welcome back to Bermuda Grass Central. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking that question, BYD, why does my yard have those, those spots in it? Why does it look like a tiger? BYD is about to explain to you what is going on with your Bermuda lawn. Okay, you are fanatic. So look, if you're new to this channel, before we go ahead and get started, click that subscription button, hit that notification bell. Every time BYD uploads a video, you will be notified by YouTube. All right, guys, it's very important that you go ahead and click that so you don't miss any of these episodes. But if this is your first time dealing with a Bermuda lawn or you have a Bermuda lawn, you still have these questions. Um, how can you tell when your Bermuda lawn is about to go dormant or how can you tell when it is dormant? Uh, key factors. One of the key factors is the temperature. All right. When you start getting temperatures that start dropping down into the 60s, especially in the 50s, or if you, if you follow me on Instagram and you saw that video I did, not a video, I did a, a picture and I said um, Bermuda grass, lawn, excuse me, Bermuda lawn frost. Um, actually, that triggered a gene in the grass to tell it to start going dormant. Now, that doesn't mean a one-time frost would do this, but what happens is over a period of time with the temperatures, you're getting less daylight. Your grass, the plant itself, has natural uh, Mother Nature-ish triggers that would tell it to start to go Dormant. Now, dormant does not mean dead. Um, with Bermuda grass, dormant means the top, that leaf, will be brown. And you still will be getting some type of root stimulation going on. Generally, during the fall, plants and trees, the, the roots start to um, dig deeper, per se, in the wintertime. All right? And what I want to show you is just how your yard is basically going to start to look here in the near future or it may be looking like this right now and um so you can understand why your grass is going dormant okay okay yard for next and as you can see you you see those those like tigerish i call them tiger spots and um actually i did a video about this oh man um i want to say it might have been a couple of years ago but um this question is starting to come up again so and you know, a lot of time, guys, when we do these videos and they get a couple of years old, people don't go look at them. So you got to keep making fresh videos. But as you see, the grass has that, that spots, green, brown, green, brown. And what that is basically, guys, your, your grass is using up, I'm not going to say using up the last of the energy that's in, because you may have some fertilizer that you put down that's still breaking down, but what's going on is it's being triggered. So the top production is going to basically start to cease, which means the greenness will go away. Now you'll have stronger root development if you have winterized your lawn, and hopefully I get that video up soon. But I want to get down here and I just want to kind of show you, as you can see, you see it guys? And like I said, your grass is not dying, it's going dormant. Now, generally in the fall, guys who have cool season grasses like Kentucky bluegrass or fescue, their grass is actually growing greener on top and it, it, it'll go through the winter if it doesn't get a deep frost, uh, snow mold or something like that to kill it off. But it's just the opposite with your Bermuda grass. It's going to start to go dormant. And I don't want you to freak out. But you still have some greenness in it. But eventually, all that is going to turn brown. Now, deep down in the ground, those roots, if you put down a high potash fertilizer, um, specifically, I would say, mid-September, October, somewhere around there, um, you'll help the root development with that, with that fertilizer. But right now, and I think we're in this November, is not the time to go put down a high fertilizer down on your Bermuda lawn. 
All right, some of you guys are having issues finding low nitrogen, high potash fertilizers. And generally as a contractor or somebody that's in the business, it's possible for me to get a uh, low nitrogen, slow release, high potash fertilizer. Matter of fact, let me show you. Okay guys, like I said, once again, Video is still not non. It's still non-sponsored, guys. I'm just using it because hey, I got it on hand. But as you can see right here, guys, I have a um, 7020, and this is the Sunnyland All Natural, which is a Milorganite clone. And if you want to continue to use Milorganite, that's fine. But it's a 640, and let me flip it back over because I want to show you some things. All right, now. I turned some of you guys on to purely organic. Purely organic is still fine. Look at the front of it. You see that's a 1002. I want you to look at the back. And it's something something you need to understand. Let me see if I can find. Where's the guaranteed analysis? Right there. All right. For my Espanol guys. I just want you to see it also in Espanol. All right. And right here, it's the American version. You see it says 7.1% water soluble um, nitrogen, 2.9% water insoluble nitrogen. That 2.9 guys is the slow release nitrogen that's in this. And generally it may be coated with something. I don't know how they make their product, but that 7.1%, let's just round it off, man. 7% and 3%. 7% of that is going to go straight into the soil. 3% is slow. So really you don't want you don't want to be feeding your Bermuda lawn with a high nitrogen at all during the fall here's another one 7020 now what's what's very important about this is this is 20 percent potash potassium guys i've had root damage during the summer all right and you you saw that with that root damage during the summer all right so that root damage during the summer i'm going to need a high pot potassium formula that's going to help repair those roots so if i put this down now and it gets into the soil that right there will help stimulate stronger roots for my grass and what does that mean that means possibly an earlier green up than you'll get from most fertilizers all right so let's go back to the okay you are for next and this is the sunny land right here you see it right there, 2% two, 2 water soluble, which means it's gonna release quickly. And what I like about this is 4% water insoluble. So this will last a little bit longer. And one of the great things about it, it's a biosolid. You're gonna still get some micronutrients. And what's so important about that is, if you can see my watch, right now, guys, it's like 68 degrees. 68 degrees, okay. That means those micronutrients will get in there. And the same situation a possible earlier green up stronger root system come spring guys i don't want you to get it in your head that come february my grass is going to start turning green does not work like that what it does mean is your grass has most of the nutrients that it will need to survive this winter okay and when spring comes it's a possibility when Bermuda grass generally does not get totally green until late January, February, March, April, May. Okay, late May, somewhere around about <laughs> early May, it's a possibility that you may start to see a possible green up. That's all that means right there. So when we go back to talking about grass going dormant, you'll see your grass starting to turn brown. You know, certain spots, or it may literally just turn brown all over everybody grass is not going to have these tiger patterns in it and um some people say that those tiger patterns mean that you have a well fed, fed <laughs> all season but that's not necessarily true because i've done yards where i've only fed them twice because let's just be real the people did not have the money okay so they only wanted to get fertilized during the spring and once um, in the middle of the summer or late summer, somewhere around there. Now, the reason I'm bringing you back here, guys, that grass is still green, right? That is my hybrid Bermuda. All 
all right it's still green now another thing that's going on too that, that rye grass i planted i'm starting to see some of some of that crap starting to come back and um that's an annual rye grass and it should have died all off but sometimes it hangs around but you see the difference in that uh, common Bermuda grass I'll put it right there hybrid common BYD plant all that that used to be dirt clay mud it took me a couple of seasons to get it to take but I'm always still having a thinness issue because if you look at my landscape what do you see trees all right now I've always said Bermuda grass does not like shade and it'll thin out but it still looks better than most. All right, and as you can see right here, it's a little bit more browner than the uh, common. All right, let's go check out the other side. Okay, as we walk around to the other side, and you see I still got a little greenness, you know, in that area right there, but everybody grass is not gonna um, go dormant at the same time. If you look at the neighbors, theirs are going dormant a tad before mine. Um, generally, it could be based on the nutrition that I gave the yard. Um, there are a bunch of deciding factors that will make your grass, you know, look different from theirs. Um, it could be the cutting height. Um, and, oh, this is very important. I want to make sure I say this. And I'll say it again in another video. One mistake I see people make is that they scout their lawn during the fall wrong time to do that guys and the reason it's the wrong time to do that is this scalping your Bermuda lawn during the fall or even the winter really the fall winter time you, why are you out there scalping your yard in the winter time anyway but if you scalp your lawn during the fall and you still have temps of 70 to 80 degrees that like uh Blaine Dennison said that roller coaster weather up and down up and down up and down when you put down your winter fertilizer what you're going to end up doing is stimulating growth all right it's going to take that energy instead of putting it down in the bottom in the roots it's going to start sending it back up top to the plant leaf all right when those plant leaves start to stimulate and they start back trying to grow they won't grow like they grow during the actual growing season when you run that lawnmower across it, you're still trying to stimulate it. So all the energy that should have been stored in those roots, you're pulling it up to the top, which could cause you to have possible root damage during the winter. So you don't want to put down a high fertilizer. You don't want to scalp your yard during the fall. You scalp your yard around May or even June when you get that when you get the sunlight and the temperatures are telling your Bermuda lawn to start back growing and it'll start sending energy that's stored in those roots back up to the top thus your earlier green up so yeah you are fanatics that's that is how you tell if your Bermuda lawn is going dormant during the fall and the winter okay some guys it'll go it'll like i get messages from guys in texas all the time and by the way i love you texas <laughs> not a cowboy fan but i still love the state of texas because you guys support byd like none other uh i guess one of my other biggest states is georgia too i get man i get phone calls emails texts uh instant dms instant messages everything from people from georgia but you guys in texas seem to have your weather weather is different i know it's, it's hotter um and it seems like it's, it's it's you got a roller coaster going on too but i think i talked to thirds i view down there um matter of fact it was this morning and i think he said y'all had temps that would it should be like 80 degrees one day this week so that's 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 awesome and weird at the same time but guys now you know how to tell when your bermuda lawn is going dormant for the winter remember it's not dying bermuda grass is totally different from 
most grasses on the earth, all right? So guys, if this has been informative, make sure that you hit that like button. Support the channel, guys. And guys, you know, support support the channel. Buy a t-shirt. It only costs like $21, nothing. That, with that, that money, guys, it helps me buy products um, to, to really bring you the information that you're looking for. You know, this is not one of those channels that's, how can I say it, out to look cute or trying to figure out a way to take your money, but supporting the channel by buying a t-shirt, uh, donating through the PayPal link that's in there. Um, if I can, I'll put a uh, the Cash App link down there also, and that way you can support the channel. But remember this, guys, if you hadn't subscribed, click that subscription button, ding that notification bell, and every time BYD uploads a video, you will be notified by YouTube. Once again, you are tuned into Bermuda Grass Central with BYD. This is Michael Bowman.